Hi, uh, and welcome to another session of Table Fringe Festival. Thank you for tuning in. I'm sorry I had to record, uh, but I'm traveling at this time, and I, but I hope you have enjoyed all the sessions that came before this one, and that you stick around for Roddy and Mike's talks afterwards. As announced on Twitter, by tuning in, you are being entered in the chance to get a 60-day trial of an Interworks portal, and I'll help you set it up as well. The announcement will be done during the closing marks. On that note, I would like to thank Emily, Sarah, Wasim, and Simon for their amazing work in putting the Table Fringe Festival together. It's a great, a great chance for those that don't get a chance to attend any of the conferences to learn more from the community. Now, without further ado, let's talk in better than analytics. We live in a time where internet already exists. But imagine that you have internet, but you are at a point in the past where you are browsing your bank's website, you see um, an account being offered by your bank that has a great interest rate and everything kind of looks like a great deal. You look for the button to apply, but that button doesn't yet exist. Instead, you have to take time off your lunch break. You have to queue and hope that you didn't forget any of the documents that will allow you to open the account. Does that sound familiar? Now let's, Fast forward to 2018. You are again on your bank's website. You see a product there that again looks like a great deal, great rate, everything is good. You want to subscribe to it. The apply button is there, big and bold. Click apply, fill up the forms. No need for documents as they already have your details. The confirmation of your new savings account took less than five minutes. Of course, we just looked at one of the most traditional industries. Banking is certainly not famous for being on the edge of innovation. Yet, most, if not all, offering on, most banks are offering online banking and centralizing the offerings around the app or the website with everything in one place. It's now incredibly rare for most people to have to go into a, a physical branch. But let's look at another example, the NBA. The NBA, on the other hand, is a global brand, always looking at ways to engage new fans, and their digital presence has always been out there with the best. As a fan, the NBA site greets you with the intention of making it easy for you to, do, to access their content within the site. Let's just look at a few examples. From the top on the left-hand side, one click and I will see the, the latest scores. I looked just down there, and we, even without clicking uh, anything, I can see uh, the, the time for the next game. Then at the bottom, you have two big buttons. One is uh, to the, the store to pur purchase merchandising. The other one is to purchase a, a league pass so that you can watch on your laptop or on, on your TV. All of those options are one or two clicks away, and that's going to be key in embedded analytics. Let's talk about Tableau. Why, when we're using Tableau, does it have to be different? Why should analytics be different? Shouldn't we make it as accessible as online banking or the NBA apps a website? The aim should always be to make it easy to access analytics and lowering the bar drives adoption. Just look at something from Derek Austin, another Tableau ambassador. Driving adoption begins with minimizing the learning curve. And that is a key aspect of the way that we looked at embedded analytics. But before we kind of delve more into that, let's think about Tableau. Is it a product? It is, is it a platform? Well, a product is generally fairly static and not expendable. We can talk about Excel, for instance, in that case. A platform, on the other hand, can be expanded upon. Users can extend, expand easily. A product is a silo unto itself. However, a platform is a piece of a greater puzzle. It fits into existing systems and processes. By utilizing Tableau Server with JavaScript and REST APIs, we can use Tableau as a platform in our organization. Let's look at what that looks like in a typical analytical environment. From the left to right, you have all the data coming in, cold storage, warm storage, reporting layers, and so on. You, one thing that you'll notice is that Tableau is not the tip of the iceberg. And certainly, Tableau is not the end of the analytics, analytics journey. 
While users can play with data in the sandbox, for those that really need to, the consumers, however, would use a web portal to access their analytics in a site that feels familiar and integrates well with the rest of the organization. Integrating with existing systems or providing simple solutions are going to be key to the success of your data-driven organization. I'll give you a few seconds to read this. As most of you uh, might be familiar with, whenever there's a new um, product or platform to be introduced within the ecosystem, IT typically recoils because they don't want to change the way things are already set up within our organization. That's why it's important that when we're talking about analytics and anything that new that comes with it needs to fit with the rest of the ecosystem or the rest of the environment. So integrating new visualizations into your existing systems, that's gonna be key for what we want to do. So we talk about embedded analytics. What we're talking about is, for instance, Tableau desktop authors, spending time creating the, that perfect report just for it to go unseen, lost in the myriad of so many other reports. Leveraging existing technology with Tableau Server and, and their APIs, creating a simple and easy way to interact with the front end is gonna be key. Embedded analytics should just be a part of the ecosystem in the company, as I've mentioned earlier. It should integrate with, easily within their platform. Importantly, it needs to be timely and accurate it also needs to be easy to understand. We need to have communication across the different users. But also importantly, it needs to be portable. And here we're talking about tablets, mobile, which is key. How many of you have been using your tablet, your mobile today? Pretty much everyone, right? So why shouldn't analytics be accessible there? But also, also, another thing that's quite important when we talk about embedded analytics is that the solutions that we are creating need to adapt to the needs of the audiences. The, the, the needs of your audience in 2016 are not the same needs as 2018. So the solutions that you're working with, they need to be adaptable so that they meet the needs from your customers rather than the other way around. Let's look at a bit of detail in terms of um, using embedded analytics and ways of putting that. So iframe, typically iframe pulls from another URL and it's very simple in itself. Um, there's less customization available, less control, whereas JavaScript allows you, uh, it's a bit more complex, but it also allows you to create scripts within uh, using JavaScript, allows you uh, more customization, allows you more control around the requests that you're asking from the REST API uh, from Tableau Server. Let's look at a few examples of embedded analytics. It doesn't have to be complicated. We don't need to be talking about just doing a full-blown site. I'll show you that later, but also I want to show you some simple examples. And this one is uh, my, my own uh, annual leave entitlement at Interworks with, with uh, our own dog food. And what you can see there is that I logged in into Salesforce and at the bottom we are embedding uh, a dashboard that shows how many days uh, holidays I've taken last year, how many uh, I have available, and how many uh, I've taken so far. But the key point, of course, is not that we are showing you how to build of how it works. It is a case of showing how useful it is. Certainly for us, that or you, that can be something completely different, but it's really useful to you. For instance, another use case is uh, when we talk about uh, budget burns. Our situation used to be that if someone asked where they were on the budget, it would take someone from operations a couple of hours to assemble all the data, look at all the assignments and engagements and pull all the data together, and then making sure that was this assigned, was this delivered, was this invoiced, add everything up and making sure that everything was okay. However, nowadays, when you're looking at it, a consultant can be on site with a client, logs into Salesforce, and give them the data, the detail immediately. Or they can just, someone is on the phone with a, with a client and they can read that, oh, this is the value, these are the numbers that you're looking for. 
And we've done that internally uh, in a number of situations, which again, is all about making things simple. Two clicks, I get all the information. I don't need to say, oh, I need to spend an hour again looking for that and I'll come back to you. Another simple example that you have here is La Nación. It's an Argentinian newspaper and they often use um, visualizations from Tableau Public. This is another one from their site. So you can see the site uh, on the right hand side uh, and the visualization from Tableau Public is there. Again, quite simple. On the other end of the spectrum, you have a fully fledged website or portal. And you can see here. I'll just show you what this looks like in real life. So when when you first come in into the portal, it greets you with some of the dashboards that you can get access to. At the bottom, I can see my recently viewed. There's a star that indicates that's a favorite of mine. And I can click on one of the visualizations and it's going to take me there. We have some splash screens added uh, just to make things a bit more uh, fun rather than spinning wheel. This is a nod to Paul Benu because I know he hates the spinning wheel. Um, and you have a few things that you can do. Uh, you can use the filters like you used before. But for instance, if you're working in a call center, you need data to be refreshed immediately. You can have a refresh rate of 30 seconds. So every 30 seconds, your dashboard data gets refreshed to make sure that you have the latest one. Um, you can change that uh, setting there as well if needed be. A uh, few other things that you can do is to, to add comments. So I'll just show you this as a, <laughs> a use case. If you wanted to add a comment to a specific data point, you could just click on the data point and add um, a comment. Rather than the comment appear on the left-hand side, what will happen is that you'll have a comment exactly on a specific data point, as you can see there. There's a few other things as well uh, that you have in terms of options, which is to export to PowerPoint if needed be. Um, and you can also add uh, filters that are global filters and across a number of workbooks that are not necessarily linked between workbooks. So you can have the same filter running across multiple workbooks if there's a need for that. Let's just go back to where we were, to our presentation. So some of the ideas, one of them you looked at, so write back, so the ability of write comments that write back to the database that then get uh, pushed back to, to the view. Then you have the, an export of a presentation. So uh, sometimes, and I know that Tableau is not meant for uh, PowerPoint, but sometimes someone just needs two or three dashboards to push into a presentation. Click, 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 export those together in one simple uh, presentation already using the company's template, and that's done. You have dashboard times. I gave you the example of um, a call center that needs a refresh rate higher than what Tableau Server uh, allows you to. JavaScript is there to help you out with that. Data science. So if you want to integrate um, R and Python uh, together with Tableau, you can do that. Or if you want to add uh, a visualization that has combined Tableau and D3, JavaScript allows you to do that. So embedded analytics will be a good way of doing that. But just kind of to, to wrap it up, why embed it? It's all about looking, feeling, customization. You want custom navigation. You want something that's clean and it's targeted to you. More importantly, you want to see something that's familiar. feels like a, something that you navigate to every day. Um, and also, sometimes you just add a, added functionality that Tableau Server cannot yet provide, but using, again, uh, leveraging Tableau Server with REST API and JavaScript or wireframes is something you can do quite simply. So thank you very much for listening. As I said, there will be an announcement at the end of the of the day, and then we'll announce your Twitter as well in terms of who won uh, the trial of 60 days. I'm more than happy to, to help you set up. A uh, few resources here at the end, and I'll look forward to hearing your feedback on the, on the talk. Thank you very much.